Hello everyone. My name is Megan and I will be your moderator for today. Uh, we're just going to take a couple moments to let everybody join us from wherever they are. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Um, I've been a Canvas ambassador all four years of college. Uh, I am a graduate of the class of 2020 and I studied cognitive science, which is the interdisciplinary study of the mind. Um, I am from Signal Hill, uh, California, which is within Long Beach, which is just a little sneak peek at who our two ambassadors will be for today. Um, but before we begin, I would really like to take a few moments to thank all of you for tuning in um, to watch our virtual visit. Um, because of everything happening in the world right now, uh, I just wanted to say that we as a community recognize and acknowledge the pain stemming from today's circumstances. Uh, we stand with you as a campus, and I would invite you to read our chancellor's message on news.berkeley.edu uh, to learn more about how we as a community are responding to today's events and the values that we stand for as a university. Um, so again, thank you all so much for being here and we'll get started with a few housekeeping items. Uh, this is a 40 minute presentation. Um, we have turned off the chat function, but please type your questions in the Q&A. Um, we have a whole team of campus ambassadors excited to answer your questions. Um, we've been trained on how to do so, so please take advantage of this opportunity. Um, there are also polls located throughout the presentation where we can learn more about you. Um, so I just invite you to fill that out as they appear on your screen. And this virtual visit is recorded with a different version available on our website, just in case you want to watch another one. And I would not blame you. Um, but this presentation is a campus overview with the student perspective in mind. Um, so we're gonna talk about academics, housing and dining, health and safety, and basically what all the relevant information that you'll need um, to being a Berkeley student flavored with our two ambassadors' personal experiences, stories, and knowledge. Um, there won't be any admissions or financial aid information, but we can direct you to those sources. And then in the last 15 to 20 minutes, we'll end with a Q&A where we'll do our best to answer any and all of your questions. Um, we'll mostly focus on open-ended questions that give our ambassadors the opportunity to share some of their experiences. Um, but with that being said, I'll pass it off to Justine and Casey, our two ambassadors for today. So I'll see you later. Hi everyone, my name is Justine. Um, I'm very excited to be here with you guys today. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm from Long Beach, California. Go Long Beach. Um, I'm a rising sophomore, so I just finished up my freshman year at Berkeley, and I'm planning on double majoring in biology and psychology. Uh, I have a lot of involvement on campus, which is super exciting. I go to Berkeley Hillel a lot. I have a engagement fellowship there. So if you have any questions about Jewish life at Berkeley, let me know. I am in the pre-vet club. I am in Greek life. And I also have a job at Yali's Cafe, which is in one of our beautiful buildings on campus. Um, and a really fun fact about me is I have met a lot of the Dodger players because I am a big fan of the Dodgers. Um, so a little shout out to them. The baseball season is starting soon. So yeah. Okay, and then, hello everyone, I'm Casey, I'm your other um, ambassador for the day, so I use the pronouns he, him, his. I'm also sort of from Long Beach, California, so woo, shout out to SoCal. Um, I'm a rising senior, so I just finished my junior year, so I'm a four, my fourth year, if you use that terminology. Um, I'm a chemistry major, and my involvement on campus involve, is, includes UC Rally Committee, it's like our spirit group on campus, a lot of fun, a lot of spirit, love the spirit, it's crazy. Um, also, Cal Student Philanthropy, philanthropy and get it up. And then also I am sports. I like to work out and have fun and whether I'm winning or not, fun sports. Um, and then a fun fact about me, I guess I have two just like to build off of Justine. She met a lot of Dodgers. My grandpa actually played for the Angels. So yay Angels, not Dodgers. I don't know, whatever, but go Angels. Um, and also a fun fact is I have a twin sister that goes to UCLA. So I will probably bring a lot of like perspective of UCLA and Berkeley life and why you should choose us, you know, why, why, why we're cool. Um, but anyways, that's a fun fact about me. And without further ado, we can jump on in. So we want to welcome all of you to Berkeley. Um, 
we're not there physically, but we all have that spirit. And we're also asking a poll right now about who you are. We want to know a little bit more about you and uh, what what you're what's going on with you. Um, so in the first picture on the upper left hand corner, it's our division one football team. Uh, Go Bears. We have a lot of school spirit at Berkeley, so you'll constantly be hearing us uh, probably throughout this tour, even just talking about um, our spirit. I think it's unmatched personally. Um, also, we're celebrating 150 years of women at Berkeley. Uh, so that's really exciting. That's actually this year that we're celebrating it. Um, so that's really fun and we've been doing some fun little online celebrations and um, Instagram campaigns about it. Uh, also, um, this is our Campanile in the middle picture. So it's our clock and bell tower and it chimes pretty much throughout the day, every hour. Casey's wearing a shirt with it on. Uh, so yeah, the Campanile is probably my favorite building on campus. It's beautiful. I'm in Berkeley right now, so I can hear it all the time. Um, and it just makes me feel really happy even though we're online. Um, yeah. All right, so for today, we will be going over a few key topics before we dive into the tour. Uh, we'll be giving an overview of Berkeley. Casey will focus on that. And then we'll move into academics, talking about the different colleges. Then we'll talk about housing and dining, health and safety, um, student resources, our student life on campus, which is super big part of it, and athletics and campus highlights because we have a beautiful campus. Okie dokie. So it's my turn to give you guys the history of uh, Berkeley and also a good Berkeley overview of it all of it. Um, so we were founded back in 1868. Back then, President Abraham Lincoln signed a, an act called the Land Grant Act, Moral Land Grant Act, we gave California land for universities. So we were the very first UC around. We were just the University of California. So as you can see, we've gone by many names, University of California. When other UCs popped up, like UCLA, UCI, other UC Davis, when they all popped up, we then went by UC Berkeley. Um, but we also go by Cal, just C-A-L, because we were the first. Um, and one like thing that I like to think of is when I think of athletics at Berkeley, I think of Cal. When I think of like academics at Berkeley, I think of Berkeley. So Berkeley academics, Cal sports, or either or, they're all mixed around, but that's like my kind of way of seeing it. You can also call us UCB, but you know, it's not the most popular one. Um, as yeah, like I said, we're the first of the nine undergraduate colleges. Our mascot is the golden bear. Um, his name, it's a golden bear. His name is Oski. He's a lot of fun. You'll see him on some upcoming slides. It's great. On our campus size, about 31,000 undergraduate students with just shy of 12,000 graduate students. Really big campus. That's, why, that's one thing I love about Berkeley is whenever you're walking around, there's always so much going on, so many people. Just You feel like you're a part of the community out there. It's great. Sorry, I'm moving on. Um, so there's some pictures on campus. So right there that on the far left, that is Sailor Gate. That used to be the southmost entrance of the university until we, um, uh, we acquired the land on the other side of it. So it's more of like an entrance to our Sproul Plaza. It's a very nice gate, very beautiful. I wish you guys could see it. Um, some cool things we do for Spirit is we light it up blue and gold when we um, go against Sanford, our main rival. That whole week is lit up blue and gold. I actually had got to do that, so pretty cool. Um, in the middle, that is Sturdy the Bear. It's one of our bear statues on campus. I believe we have just shy of 27 bear statues now. I know the number's dwindling, um, but that's the biggest bear statue. Really neat. Um, but our bear, again, does not look like that. He looks like the bottom right. That's Oski. A lot more huggable, a lot more approachable. He's fun. He's interesting. Historically, about five foot four, so not like a menacing bear. Very much like a weird hunchback. He loves to give hugs. Some don't accept it. I love to hug Oski. He's wonderful. And then in the top right, that is our university seal. We have three of them on campus and they're given to us by Tiffany and Company. Very nice. And uh, one, I wish if you were there, I would say don't step on it. And even if you visit, don't step on it. There's a curse about it. If you step on the seal, you'll not get a 4.0. So it's fun whenever you go to class, there's like a parting of the Red Sea around the seal. There's no one stepping on the seal. Everyone, whether you believe in it or not, you just don't go on it. Um, so yeah. And it's now a little bit of an overview of Berkeley with the campus culture mainly. Um, so we are change makers. We have, we're always go out and we like we fight for what we believe in. Um, uh, one of those being with the free speech movement. So during the civil rights era and there's a civil rights movement here at Berkeley, we're also fighting to have free speech on campus. That being said, like as you can see in that picture, that is Sailor Gate. We acquired the land on the far side of it, so away from us, we acquired that land, and that's where the students would actually go and fight and like talk, just do free speech things. But because it's now a part of the university, we could no longer do it because we no longer have free speech out there because they wanted us to be, 
didn't want to like curtail it on campus. So he fought to have free speech on campus and also fought for just free speech in general. And we got free speech. So that was 1964, 1965, we got a new chance. So he gave us free speech. That's just one little tidbit of history for you. Um, like I said, like challenging the status quo, leadership, free speech, always like going out and just fighting for what you believe in, or just even just having like, intellectual conversations with others that you might not agree with, but you just go out and you just like, just kind of see their viewpoint, just talk it up. It's a very nice um, atmosphere. And then go moving on to the community. Again, like I, I just keep saying it again and again, compassionate, they let people fight for what they believe in. That's just the way people will go out there and they, whether it's like having a fossil fuels at Berkeley or not having fossil fuels at Berkeley, I should say, um, they, that's just the one I'm thinking of because my friend's a part of it. So always fighting for what they believe. They're very passionate. And they also go out to make, um, uh, they're actually, I think Berkeley is one of the um, largest contributors to like um, startups in the world. I think Berkeley has the most startups coming from us, but I don't know the exact number. I just know that we, we help produce a lot of startups. Um, so yeah. And then again, some more pictures. Um, like I said, free speech, fighting for what we believe in with um, wet one protest there. But then on the bottom left, that's also another um, uh, spot where we have rallies. So again, very spirited, whether it's fighting for what you believe in or go bears. Um, in the top middle, um, that is just some of the research that ha happens on campus. Again, very academic, a lot of science and research going on, whether it's here or up in the hill next to us, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, a lot of, a lot of research going on. Also in the um, middle, again, some science projects and robots. You can actually see robots roaming campus. They actually, we have robot delivery, um, robots that deliver food, which is pretty nice, KiwiBot. Um, Tom, uh, the top right, again, Oski and Rally Committee, Celebrating Spirit. And then on the bottom right, that's actually Campanile. We actually had some um, performers perform off the side of the Campanile for its 100th birthday. So there's a little neat thing that just goes around at Berkeley. All right, so now I'm gonna to talk to you about undergraduate colleges. Before I go into that though, uh, a little fun fact, I was a Kiwi bot, those little robots that deliver food um, around campus. I was one of those for Halloween. So that's kind of exciting. Um, we're also giving you a poll right now about what you're interested in. We wanna know like what kind of field you're interested in going into. And obviously it's totally okay if you have no idea what you wanna do. I am a double major for that exact reason. So. Uh, let's talk about the undergraduate colleges. So there are five undergraduate colleges. They include the College of Letters and Science, Rouser College of Natural Resources, uh, the College of Environmental Design, the College of Chemistry, and the College of Engineering. And transferring between colleges can be easy when you're transferring um, from Letters and Science to Rouser or even to Environmental Design. Uh, can transferring to chemistry and engineering is a little more tough, so I would definitely advise you, if you're interested in those colleges, definitely apply straight into them. It's a little bit more tough to, you know, go uh, into them once you're already here and in a different college. All right, the College of Letters and Science. That is the college where both of my majors are in. I'm an integrative biology major and I am a psychology major and the College of Letters and Science actually makes up about three-fourths of our undergraduate population so it's a huge presence here there are five divisions uh, that includes arts and humanities biological science mathematical and physical sciences social sciences and undergraduate studies and there are 80 plus majors. I could name like maybe like 10. There are so many and they're so diverse, but it's super cool because you'll meet someone and you won't even know what their major is and you'll get to find out a lot about it. Uh, we also have uh, breath requirements in the College of Letters and Science. Uh, we have seven undergraduate breath requirements and that is where we take classes that might not be in our field like philosophy and values or uh, social and behavioral sciences and you get to learn a little bit more about that even when you aren't majoring in that and that's I really like the breath requirements because of that. Also we have the Rouser College of Natural Resources. Um, that is an environmentally focused college. It has some really interesting majors. Um, my roommate is an environmental economics major which I think is super cool. There's also interdisciplinary interdisciplinary studies, um, forestry, biological sciences, it, they, they have it across the board, even in different colleges. So they have like molecular environmental biology, which is really interesting. I heard it's like a bit more animal and plant focused, which can be really cool. And I know a lot of people in that college really focus on sustainability and social justice too, which is just really fun to like hear about, even though I'm not involved in it. So yeah. 
And then we have the College of Environmental Design, which is the smallest college at Berkeley, actually. It only has three departments, um, architecture, landscape architecture, and city and regional planning. So uh, it's pretty small, but I've heard really awesome things about it too. Um, there's a quote that says, craft ecologically sustainable and resilient, prosperous and fair, healthy and beautifully built environments. And that picture is of Worcester Hall, which actually really applies to that quote because um, it was it was built based on brutalism, which uh, is environmentally, it's like an environmental purpose. Um, like that's why you see the concrete like that and the windows are built in that, in that way. So I think that's like really cool in itself. Okay, and then I can take over for the last two colleges, the College of Chemistry and the College of Engineering. So I am in the College of Chemistry, but I actually started in the College of Letters and Science. So like Justine said, it is a little bit harder to transfer into the College of Chemistry and, and, and into Engineering. The reason being is with the other two, the other three colleges, Letters and Science, Rouser College of Natural Resources, and Environmental Design, when you apply into the college, like when you're applying, you apply as an undeclared, like intending to major in a certain major, and you will eventually declare that major with chemistry and engineering, you apply into school with a major. So if you get in, you have that major. That's why it's a little bit harder to transfer because not only are you transferring colleges, you're also declaring a major at this, like essentially at the same time. That's why it's a little bit harder, but you, it, it, it is possible. I did it. It is possible. It's just a little bit harder, like um, requirement wise. Um, but so College of Chemistry has about a thousand students and our two departments, as you can see there, but there are three majors. The three majors are chemistry, chemical biology and chemical engineering. So if you're looking for chemical engineering, it's not in the College of Engineering, it's in College of Chemistry. The main reason I think of it is because in the name is chemical engineering. If it was engineering of chemistry, it'd be engineering, but because chemistry comes first in the name, it's in College of Chemistry. Um, and like I said, it's applied directly. And we are ranked number one globally for chemistry. It's amazing. We actually discovered 16 elements at Berkeley, two of them being Berkeley, Berkelium and Californium. So really cool, really great, love chemistry. Also, I saw some, I saw six of you guys like in the little poll said that you want to be interested in chemistry. Yeah, chemistry. <laughs> um, okay, and then moving on to engineering. So with engineering, basically anything with the word engineering in it, you would find it in the College of Engineering, listed all of them there, bioengineering, civil engineering, environmental engineering, electrical engineering, computer science, the list goes on and on. Again, except for chemical engineering, that is in the College of Chemistry. And then a cool little thing about College of Engineering is that they actually have a program with our Haas Graduate School of Business. I'll talk about the graduate schools in a hot minute. Um, but with, um, with Haas and Engineering, they have a program called MET, Management, Entrepreneurship, and Technology Program. So with that, when you apply to Berkeley, you essentially apply and get like two majors kind of combined into one. So you can do MET and it would be business and electrical engineering computer science or business and civil engineering or you kind of have those two merged together it's a really great program and a neat thing is when you apply into that program if you don't get into that program you are still considered for just general just basic engineering whatever the engineering major is so it's like a two it's like you get to apply to two schools but with only one shot it's a neat little nice little thing and then moving on to the graduate schools so here at berkeley we have nine graduate colleges um, or grad, nine graduate schools that are solely for graduate schools, but there are also plenty other graduate programs. I know chem, um, chemistry has a graduate program, even though they don't have a graduate school listed here. Um, and like I was mentioning before, the Haas Graduate School of Business is a really great business school here, and they actually have an undergraduate program. So if you're looking to do business at Berkeley, what you would, uh, at business at Berkeley, you could go into the Haas Graduate School of Business. They have the undergrad program. The way that would happen is you apply to letters in science, intending to go into the Haas Graduate School of Business by the end of your second year. And if you get in, great, you do business there. If not, there are other offshoots and other majors you can choose within the College of Letters and Science. It's not like all for naught. So it is a very nice program that you do have available to you. We also have a graduate school of, of, um, of education, like CalTeach. I know they also help with that, so you can get like, teachers. Um, the graduate school of information. And we also have an optometry school here at Berkeley. So we actually have an eye clinic. You can go and for a $10 copay, you can go get your eyes checked up. So it's a very nice little option to have and just get your eyes checked up. Because I otherwise, I would never gotten my eyes checked up. I know it's really lame of me, but now that it's right in my school, right in my own backyard, I go pretty easy, pretty, um, it, pretty easy for me to go. Um, and then public health, public policy. And with these um, pictures listed to see pictures here, you can see on the left that is a Haas Graduate School of Business. It's actually one of the newer areas of Berkeley. Not like, there's, we have newer buildings, but this, one, this whole area was like built in the 70s, 80s. So it's kind of like newer. Um, then we have the Berkeley Law. So we do have a law school. Um, a, very nice. My friend is actually trying to like sl slide into the Berkeley Law. So it's like, 
pretty nice little area. And then we have the um, South Hall. South Hall is actually the oldest building on campus, built in 1873, so five years after we were founded. We also had a North Hall and a South Hall. North Hall didn't make it, but South Hall's still, still around. And so it's kind of cool having our newest graduate school, the Graduate School of Information, being in our oldest building, South Hall. So it's a nice and little neat little cross decades thing to it. All right, so our academic structure and class size, um, I'm gonna go over that a little bit. It's a little hard to understand, so I'll try and make that clear as possible. So we have something called lecture, which I'm sure you've heard about. Um, you can see a picture of it in Wheeler Hall right there. And then we have discussion section, which is where we kind of like take what we learn from lecture and we discuss it with our um, graduate student instructors uh, and they'll lead the discussions and we can do like worksheets in there. I know that personally discussion sections have been very helpful for me. Um, so I definitely really like that about Berkeley. Also, we have office hours, which is really great if you need some extra help or if you just want to talk to your professor or GSI a little bit more and get to know them. Uh, so office hours are a really great resource here as well. Our class sizes are pretty small, actually. There is an 18 to, 20, 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and 85% of our classes are fewer than 50 students. You will see that the classes when you first come to Berkeley are a little bit bigger, and that's just because a lot of people have to take those classes. They're all general requirements. I took chemistry 1A um, my first semester being here. It was pretty big, but those uh, discussion sections and office hours were really helpful for me when I needed to cl clarify things and stuff. Um, also, the Student Learning Center. I really like the Student Learning Center. It's a great resource, especially if you need a little bit of extra help again. Uh, there's drop-in tutoring, which I definitely utilized when I took Chemistry 1A. Um, I really advise you to utilize that, even in the, the online format. Um, we still have the Student Learning Center resources. There's virtual drop-in tutoring. Um, I know a lot of people who have utilized that and um, they continue to do so over the summer, which is really great. Yep, and then also just building off of what Justine said with the um, class sizes, the, yeah, for chem chemistry 1A I also took and it was pretty large. I wanna say like my, just my class was like maybe 300, but now when I go to physical chemistry, which not every, only only chemistry people take, it's down to about 50 people. So it does like really shrink down once you uh, move past the prerequisites. Um, and so now, so jumping into housing and dining, so you can see a poll popped up on your screen to just ask where you're from and where you're joining us from. I'm currently watching the poll change and a lot of you guys are from East Coast or even the uh, Central Time. So thanks for tuning in, whatever time it is out, out over yonder. Um, and so as you can see, there are many options for housing here at Berkeley. Um, uh, just to name a few, there's the units, units one, two, and three. These are high rise buildings with double or triple occupancy rooms. There are a few singles, but only a handful. So don't bet on a single, you're probably gonna have a roommate. Um, so those are the units. They're also really close to campus, just about like the maximum of like a four minute walking distance, maybe even just like three blocks of, depends on how fast you walk. It's very nice, very close. I lived in unit three, so who had a great view of the bay, I have to say, gorgeous view. Um, then we have Clark Kerr. Clark Kerr is about a 10, 15 minute walk from campus, so farther away from um, campus than the units, but being that they are farther away, they have more space out there. So it's a, the dorms are like generally bigger just because they have more land to kind of work with in their building. Um, they also have their own basketball court out there, their own track, their own pool, their own garden, fire trails to go walk up in the hills. It's great, awesome. So Clark Kerr, even though it is far away, they do make up with it by being gorgeous. It's also right through um, Greek Rose. So when you walk there, it's always a very lively walk. Love it. Um, Blackwell Hall is actually our newest um, dorm. It was built two years ago in 2018. Um, very new. It's basically like the units, but instead of having four different high-rise buildings, it's just mashed together all in one big massive building. It, it, but they do have a lot of doubles. It's mostly doubles. They do have a few singles in Blackwell. So if you're looking for a single, that's your best bet, but you're probably going to get a double. Um, but that's Blackwell Hall. Very nice. And that is literally across the street from campus. Um, Foothill and Stern, they're up on the hills of Berkeley, really close to the College of Chemistry and College of Engineering. So if you're looking to major in those colleges, you might want to live in Foothill or Stern because it's really close. They're all suite style rooms. So it's a room with some people in it, room with people in it, sharing a room in the middle. So nice, nice suite style to it all. Stern is for um, a female identifying. So if you want to uh, jump into Stern, you can do that. Otherwise, um, it's all of them are co-ed, meaning that they have like a guy's room, girl's room, guy's room, girl's room. Um, you can often, some rooms have, or some um, units have 
like a guy's floor, a girl's floor, guy's floor, you can opt in or opt out of that. They're all, there are also theme programs. So if you would like to do, um, if you want to jump into a theme program with people like a, um, like-minded or just like um, individuals like you, you can hop into a theme program. I know they have an African-American theme program in unit one, a LGBTQ theme program in unit three, Pacific Islander, I believe is in unit two. So plenty of theme programs. If you want to look them up, housing.berkeley.edu. Check it out. Um, and then moving on to dining, and this is also all for um, first year housing. I'll talk about um, continuing students after this. Um, so with dining, so when you get into a dorm, you do have a, a meal plan attached to it. Uh, I'll jump into that. As you see that, I jumped to the very bottom slide, a very bottom bullet point. So yeah, so there's a meal plan attached to it. Um, you can always upgrade your meal plan to get more food, um, to get more meals. But my personal opinion is to pocket that upgrade fee and what you would spend to upgrade, you would go spend around Berkeley because there's plenty of food options out around Berkeley. So many different tastes, so many different cuisines, highly recommend. Um, and then also, so going, getting into the dorms, so freshmen do get priority when you apply for housing. Um, with the housing, as you can see, it says choose any room, any location as a last preference to get a housing offer. It's really, it's highly recommended. There are five choices on the housing offer, like your, your top five choices. This is your first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice. For your fifth choice, put any room, any location, and you're highly, you're highly encouraged to do it, and you are likely to get a housing offer. If you get picky and you put like, you know, your fifth option instead of any room, any location, you might not get housing. For the past three years, they have given everyone who has applied for housing some housing, and it may not be their first choice or their second choice or third choice, but they do get housing, and they usually do give you like your, your first, second, or third choice. They rarely ever go to your fourth choice. So don't think that you know, you're probably going to end up anywhere. You will probably get your top, your top three choices. And living in the dorms, um, plenty of resources there. So you have an RA, a resident assistant. So that's just someone who lives on the floor or maybe like the floor above you or below you. And they're there if you ever need help with anything, if you get locked out or if you just need, you know, someone to talk to. It's great just having a built-in person who is living in the dorms. You can go ask your questions too. Um, again, like I mentioned, theme programs. I already jumped, well, I jumped ahead of that one. But yeah, theme programs, like I mentioned, all around. Um, look into them. Um, and then also security. So in the dorms, there is a three-point security system. One point is using your ID card to get into the building, point number one. Point number two is using your ID to get into the elevator or into the stairs to get up to your floor, so that's point number two. And point number three is your key to actually get into the dorm. So those are your three-point security system. And then at night, it actually kind of turns to a four-point security system. They have a little security monitor right outside the door, or right, uh, right, right inside the door before you get to the elevator. So you tap into your door, security monitor, elevator, then your door. So you have like a four point security system at night, but during the day it's a three point security system. And there's also common areas in the dorms. So they, are, they have like a giant, um, not quad, but they have, the, they have the quad outside of the dorms. You can go hang out in your quad, have like a little picnic. They also have a like, um, it's not a lobby, I'm forgetting the word, but just a big common space downstairs. Um, and then like on every other floor, they have like study lounges for you to go and just hang out and relax or study. Or then every other one they have, um, a, Laundry. That unit, unit one and unit two have laundry every other floor. Unit three, it just has um, study lounges every other floor. So very nice, very good. And this little picture here is Crossroads Dining. That is the cafeteria for unit one and unit two. So it's Crossroads in the middle of them. All the other, all the units come with their own dining hall attached to it, or like uh, except for unit one, unit two, they're right next to each other. Um, also, Blackwell uses unit three. So there's a lot, plenty of dining halls. And no matter where you live, you can eat wherever you want. Go to any one of the dining hall comments as long as you, you know. You have to walk over there, so that's the only downside to it. And then moving on to transfer and continuing student housing. Um, so here's some options of, for continuing students housing that freshmen do not get. So you can live in a campus-owned apartment. So I believe in the top right, that is Martinez Commons. So yeah, that is campus, or, or Channing, that's Channing Bowditch. Martinez Commons is the bottom right, excuse me. Um, but you can live in a campus apartment, and those things are not open to the freshmen. So it is a very nice thing to kind of, you get a priority to get into those. Um, so also transfer students do get priority into, into that. Um, also the top left that is international house. So if you're an international student or you want to live with, with amongst in, international students or you just want to you know, live in international house, you could go live in I house, international house. That's the top left. Um, we also have some other affiliated um, properties with us. So the, the bottom left that is Bowles Hall. That's like a residential college. So instead of with the units you would, or with the um, uh, dorms, you would live in there for one year and then you would move out and then move back in and move out like, like that to the units like it's like a yearly contract with um uh, bulls you actually if you get in you get to stay there until you graduate so it's very nice like you are in and you get to stay in and it's also they have a lot more events that go on within um bulls hall and then 
Um, again, that's off-campus apartments. Co-ops, co-op housing is basically a whole apartment complex, but everyone works together. Like one night someone makes food, some, some one night a certain person makes food, and then you know you all kind of share responsibility within the house, taking out the trash and whatnot. So then you're the price for living there goes down a little bit. So that's co-ops. And also Greek housing. You can live in a fraternity or a sorority or just an apartment off campus. I live off campus, so plenty of ways to go and live about. And then, like I mentioned, you can camp purchase an additional meal plan, whether that's an additional meal plan when you're in the dorms to have more food, or if you live off campus and you just don't want to make food yourself, you can purchase an additional meal plan. So yeah, that's a bit of the transfer student, continuing student, all student housing and dining. All right, let's talk about health and safety. So uh, Berkeley has some really great health services, um, and that includes the Tang Center, which is our medical center right off of campus. I'll be going there soon to do a little uh, COVID-19 study, so that's good. Um, they have a lot of resources there, including urgent care, primary care, counseling, physical therapy. Uh, I personally had to go there a couple of times last semester because I got pretty sick and everyone there is really kind and super accommodating and the copay is really minimal. Even if you don't have SHIP, our student health insurance plan, um, you are required to have health insurance of some sort when you go to Berkeley. So if you don't have it, you can purchase SHIP and that'll include a lot of resources at the Tang Center. Either way, if you have your own private health insurance, it works just as fine and you can still receive the care that you need at the Tang Center. Um, also, we have the Optometry Eye Center, which Casey talked about a little bit earlier. It's really cool because people can go in to get eye exams and stuff. Uh, and the people who are studying at the um, School of Optometry are actively learning how to give eye exams and be an optometrist, which is really cool. You could just kind of see that happening. Um, we also have Path to Care, which is a really great resource if you are a survivor of sexual assault um, or harassment for that, for the record. Um, and so definitely utilize that if you really need to. Um, I know a lot of people who are involved in Path to Care and it's um, a really great resource. Um, and once you come to Berkeley, you'll find out a lot more about it, which is really great. We also have stress relief, which is really great because you're a college student, you're studying hard and you're gonna need that. Uh, De-stress with dogs. They, you don't even have to be a member of the club to like get, get to like pet dogs on campus. One of my favorite things is when like a little dog will be on campus and you'll like ask the owner if you can pet them. Or um, I lived in Foothill for my freshman year and uh, they had the de-stress with dogs. People bring the dogs to Foothill right before finals week, which was really great, um, super fun and made me a lot happier about having finals in the next week. And then we have Llama Palooza, which um, people bring llamas onto campus right by our libraries. And that's super cool as well. I haven't actually been to it, but I've heard a lot of things and seen a lot of photos of llamas. <laughs> and now I'll talk about the safety services. So uh, we have a lot of safety precautions on campus because uh, we wanna make sure that everyone is safe. Um, that, and that includes uh, our UC Police Department. Um, and that means that we have our own police department separate from the Berkeley Police Department. So they're focused on uh, on campus issues and things outside that are within the range with and they involve students. Um, additionally, we have blue light poles, which are really great. You'll see them all around campus. Uh, they're super easy to use. You just press a button and it will call um, the emergency assistance and uh, they're even off campus. So if you live in a dorm that's not on campus, uh, it's really great if you need assistance immediately. Additionally, we have Warn Me, which is a text texting service. Um, they'll message you any sort of issues or like alerts that you need to know about um, campus activity or anything around campus. Um, and it doesn't have to, it's not just about like violence or anything. Uh, doing with having to do with crime it's also about like just avoiding certain areas if like there's like a leakage or something like that that's just a random example but uh you get the idea and then the residence hall three point security which casey definitely went over uh so i'm not going to say much on that but uh I know for a fact that I felt very safe in my um, residence hall, which is really good. And then we have night services. And let me tell you, I love the night services at Berkeley. Uh, living in Foothill, it's on north side of campus. So it's not very close to a lot of 
places, especially south side of campus. So I would use the night safety shuttle probably like three times a week, like in the, in the last year. Um, and it's just really great because you can track the shuttle on your phone and see where it's at and um, make sure that you can catch it. And all you need to do is have your Cal ID with you and you can take it, it's free. Um, and it's just really great. And it, it actually travels to like different residence halls, which is super awesome because uh, like if you're hanging out with someone at like one residence hall, you can just take it from one to the other. Um, so that's really nice. And then there's Bear Walk, which is where students get trained to um, walk other students to different destinations that they need to go to. Um, and it's a radius around campus. It's not just within the Berkeley campus. Um, and these people are trained pretty, um, I don't want to say harshly, but like they, they get like a decent amount of training, I would say. So they really know what to do. And uh, it's nice because you can make a friend. I know someone who's done bear walk a few times and they've made some nice friends from it. So that's good. Yep, and then also touching on security, I have a, a nice safety shuttle right outside my house, like nice safety shuttle stop. So it's really nice. I can just hop on it and come back to my house. Um, and then so um, with student resources, so there's some student development. So this pictured right here is the Cesar Chavez Center. And this basically has all the type of student centers you would could, or student programs you could possibly need are all kind of all around Cesar Chavez Center. So as you can see, there's the, student, the transfer student center. If you're a transfer student and need some help with transfer student things, transfer student center, things that were like a regular, like a, a counselor or advisor, people don't, would, wouldn't usually know, they would know. The disabled students program, if you need more time to take a test or you need to have like a sit closer up so you can see the board, if you need anything like that, disabled student program is there for you. Generated equity center is also housed within Cedar Chavez Center. Um, multicultural center, I believe is, is um, in Martin Luther King Jr. Student Union, which is right across from the Cedar Chavez Center. This is probably taken from the student union. So you just walk across, I believe that's where the multicultural center is. Um, uh, and then plus plenty of other student development for everything else you could possibly do. Like veteran services, undocumented students, many, as you see, very bottom um, bullet point, many, many more. Plenty of things there for help, to help you kind of just feel at home on campus so you can like really navigate all the, the twists and turns that campus has to offer, or even just life has to offer, um, to find people that share the same struggle or just, they just to find comfort in people. All that and more is all within all these student centers. Highly recommend looking them up and finding whichever one you need because there's probably someone out there who is, who is there to listen and to help and just be there for you. Um, now I'm gonna talk about student life. Um, so basically we have a ton of student life things around Berkeley. We have student clubs. There are 1200 plus. So definitely really cool because you'll meet like people in the coolest clubs that you had no idea existed. Uh, I'm in the pre-vet club, which is really nice because there's not a huge pre-vet community at Berkeley. So I get to talk to a lot of people who are interested in the same field as I am. Uh, there's also volunteering and you can have a job on campus. I have two jobs on campus, which includes Campus Ambassador, and I also work at Yali's Cafe, which will hopefully be open in the fall for a little bit of takeout, which will be really fun. Um, but it's really great if you need to make some money while you're um, a student here. It's obviously college isn't cheap, so it's a great resource, um, and there's a ton of jobs on campus. I've met people who do uh, work in the libraries, work at the RSF, uh, the, that, that's our recreational sports facility, which uh, we'll be talking about a bit later. And um, their study abroad. Uh, I know a lot of people who have studied abroad, including my sister who went to Berkeley and she loved the program. So uh, I would definitely read more into that. I'm probably gonna read more into that because I'd like to study abroad. Um, and then there's like some free time fun. We got some concerts. Uh, the Campanile actually does a little concert and you don't even have to be there to hear it. I can hear it from where I'm living right now. Um, there's workshops, sports games. We have a lot of sports games and they're all very exciting. Uh, people cheer a lot. It gets really fun because the rally committee will come on with their giant flags and stuff and I really like it. Um, and then there's museums and hiking, which I love hiking to something called the Big Sea. It's uh, a really great view, of not just campus, but the Bay in general. So uh, I would definitely advise you to take advantage of that once things go back. <laughs> Yay, thank you, Justine, for the Rally Com shout out. Woo, Rally Com. Um, 
And yeah, so um, moving on to athletics, like I mentioned, I do IM sports or more just some, um, yeah, IM sports, just hanging out with friends and, you know, working out kind of. Um, but we have a lot of different levels of competition. Um, so we have Division One. So a lot of our sports are actually Division One sports. So you actually are like a high class, like student athlete, like you're like the best of the best. You'd be a Division One athlete and like actually um, uh, work with Cal Athletics and be like, um, and just like play like an actual sport for for campus then we have club sports club sports are like sponsored by cal but it's we are like it's like um there's a track club here at berkeley called strawberry canyon track club and you would just run with the track team is formed at berkeley so that's if you're not exactly division one but you still are pretty good for what you are it's amazing i was almost there but then i stopped running and now i'm down here to intramural and recreational sports so that's more of like with rally committee, we had a volleyball team called Rally Ball. We would just go and play volleyball. It was great working out. Like we're not, we were not there to win. One person said I would make it a goal of mine to kick the ball at least once every game. Mind you, it was volleyball. So a lot of fun, a lot of ways to play. Um, at Division One is like you're the top top class athlete. Club is like you're not top class, but you're all you're really good. Intramural is I'm here. I'm here just for a smile. I don't need a win. I need a participation medal. That's all I want. Um, at California Memorial Stadium, that is our Division One football stadium. Really nice. They also have the Simpson High Performance Center. That is for the Division One athletes to go and work out over there. They also have a recreational sports, facil recreational sports facility, an RSF like satellite gym over there. It's really small though. So unless you're a Division One athlete, I'd recommend avoiding the little satellite gym because the RSF, the really big one, actually the top right picture, that is the RSF. It's really big. So I would recommend going there instead of the small satellite gym. Also athletic study center. So if you are a Division One athlete or just an athlete, or Division one athlete, you can go and get um, some tutoring help over there for all your classes. Um, then we have Haas Pavilion. Haas Pavilion is the bottom right picture. And that is our um, a gymnasium for basketball, volleyball, and gymnastics. So you can go to Haas Pavilion and just enjoy. Like It's not like an actual gymnasium. Don't work out there. It's like where you go and see the games. It's a lot of fun. Um, actually, all, all games here at Berkeley are free, except for um, uh, men's football and men's basketball. Other than that, you can go to all the events for free, so it's pretty nice. Just, I would go to all the women's volleyball game, and like uh, the, oh, there's like a certain chance where you can, they spike it, and it's great, but love the spirit there. Um, and like I said, the RSF, Rec Recreational Sports Facility, a lot of fun. Like They also have classes there. You can go and take classes, um, not for credit, but just you can go there on a Saturday morning. I would love this one called Cardio Dance. You just wake up at you know, 10 a.m. It seems early. It seems late, but it's early for me. Um, so you wake up at 10 a.m. and just like, dance to Britney Spears, Rihanna, Beyonce. It's a great, great thing. That's the RSF. And then Olympic medals. We have 207 Olympic medals. And the number's always growing. I believe if we were our own, if Cal was its own nation, we would be, I believe, like in the top five for um, a, a most Olympic medals if we were a nation. So it's really great. Very athletic. Love it. Okay. <laughs> And uh, just to piggyback, piggyback off of what you were saying, Casey, uh, I know that um, RSF is still doing those um, dance, cardio dance classes and other classes uh, online. So uh, you can always check those out if you're interested. Um, but now I'll talk about libraries and research. So we have a ton of campus libraries. We have 24 official libraries on campus. Uh, my favorite library personally is Doe Library, which is the very middle top picture. Um, it's just beautiful and sometimes they'll put these blue and yellow lights on for our school colors, um, just like radiating off of uh, the library and I just think it's beautiful. Uh, there's a beautiful reading room in there and I've done a lot of work and been very productive there. Um, we have over 13 million volumes of uh, just everything um, on and off campus on like online we have a huge presence online in terms of like research articles and books and anything you really need uh, i've utilized the berkeley online library a lot um, especially for my r1b class my um, writing reading and writing class last semester so that was really helpful um, and yeah I, online resources are really great um, in terms of research, we have the Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program called URAP. Uh, I know a lot of people who are involved in that. It's really great. There's a lot of different um, things going on in terms of research. I know that even if you're not in the fields of like general, like what people would assume um, research would be about, uh, there's a ton of social science research at Berkeley. So you do not have to be a STEM major, a biology major, um, 
or like engineering to be able to get research at Berkeley. It's honestly, you can get it whatever department you're in. And I've heard that the research in like social science departments are very fascinating too. And then we have department specific opportunities, which just indicate that uh, if you're like in a certain major, you might have like opportunities for research. Hopefully in the coming year, I'll get to do a little bit of research for psychology. That's the goal at least. Uh, so yeah, that's our libraries and research. Okay, and then to wrap up our very last thing before the Q&A, um, just some campus highlights. So like I mentioned before, the fire trails, the gorgeous hills behind campus. Like, so Berkeley's here, here are the hills and you just, you, it's gorgeous. I actually hiked up there to the Big C. Justine mentioned she's like going to the Big C, which is a big block letter C under a hill. I hiked there yesterday and it's just, I just, I turn around and I always go, wow, I go to school here. It's a gorgeous view. Like that, that um, top right picture, that's the view you see, especially like, you can see the Campanile in it. Oh my God, gorgeous. That's just some fun things to do and like, a, or just a little location of Berkeley. Um, Strawberry Canyon, or Strawberry Creek, excuse me. Um, so that's like our little creek that runs through campus, the bottom right picture, and also ro it rolls into Strawberry Canyon. So I can mention the Strawberry Canyon Track Club that I looked into because I, I was a runner at one point. They would run through the canyon, which is pretty nice. Um, a, a bit, it is a hilly campus though, just to, um, you know, we are on a hill, so you are going to get a leg workout. You are going to have some pretty swole calves by the end of your four years here. So it is a workout just going to class. It's a fun workout, but it is a workout. And then, sorry, I couldn't read the last bottom because uh, Zoom is in the way. Um, so with trees and wildlife, so plenty of trees. It is very nature. We like to feel like a park like atmosphere on campus instead of having like tall buildings. There's a lot of a lot of nature going on, and especially with the wildlife. Uh, as you can see, the top left, we have squirrels on campus. They aren't really afraid of people, so you can go up and like you know they're they're really cool. They're like they're always around, but sometimes like if you're eating something, they'll come up to you and say like, hey, give me some food, and they won't they won't go away. So some people like it, some people run in terror. I'm I'm the I'm the run in terror one, but squirrels are definitely around, and it's always a very very nice like park like setting on campus. Always very beautiful and very scenic. Hello everyone, I'm back. Um, so we've taken some of your questions that we can now answer live. The first one uh, from Aaron about Oski. How cute is Oski, would you say? Um, I would say Oski is very cute. I, uh, one time I was at um, my Greek house and uh, I remember the rally committee shout out to the rally committee again, was doing a, a night rally on um, Warring Street and they came up and Oski was with them, of course, and they were playing, uh, Cal Band was with them. It was just like very exciting and Oski came up and I took a picture with him and ever since then, I am a huge Oski fan. He's adorable. I love taking photos with him and hopefully I'll get to see him soon. Yes, thanks, Justine. I think that was a great story. There's kind of a debate on campus about Oski, so if you ever end up going to Cal, you can participate. But any, after, in a similar vein, um, what are some of our favorite university traditions? So I can definitely tackle that one. Um, being a Rallycom, I love it. Not that I, there are plenty of other clubs, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of other clubs that do plenty of cool things. Um, if you're feeling like there's only Rallycom, there's a lot more, just shout out to them. Um, but my favorite tradition, I have to say, is just big game week. So our main rival is Stanford in every every sense of everything, in sports and academics in everything. Um, there are our main rival. And so during our um, football season, leading up to our big game against Stanford, it's always the football game after Thanksgiving. Um, so leading up to big game, um, we have big game week, plenty of fun traditions. So it's like a bunch of tr traditions encompassed in one. Justine mentioned that Doe Library gets blue and gold lights put up on it. That's Rally Community. We also do it to Wheeler Hall, another one of our um, lecture auditoriums, lecture halls. Um, we also do it to the Campanile. Campanile, we project, we call them gobos. What it is, is it's just like a little pie tin that we kind of cut out a, um, a, we stencil out a image onto it, put it in front of a big light and it projects it onto the Campanile. It's a lot of fun. Um, there's also, we throw plenty of rallies, like Justin mentioned, night rallies going around, just go bears, go bears, go bears, go bears. Um, we also go to um, San Francisco and we ride a cable car around San Francisco with our Cal band and Cal cheer and Cal dance and Oski and flags and banners, all of it just riding a cable car through San Francisco saying, go bears, beat Stanford, go bears, beat Stanford. It's great. It's called the cable car rally. So many more things that I love about Berkeley and so many more fun traditions, but just overall, all of that, just big game week, just seeing like, 
even people who aren't that spirited just go like, yeah, go Bears, but like, we're going to be Stanford. Like, even if they're not that spirited, they all just feel like just the spirit for it. So, which I personally love, like, but having a rivalry is kind of fun. It builds up both colleges. So you both are just working together, like to best each other, but also like, it's just a fun, love it. So that's some of my favorite traditions is big game week. Yeah, I would say it's pretty cool to have a rival in Stanford. You know, we do have more Nobel Prizes and more elements on the periodic table. So um, just a, another reminder about who our favorite school is in the Bay. But um, go trees. Anyways, um, how, in the contrast, um, how much attention do we get from academic advisors? We are a pretty large school. So how do students find the attention? that they need? I can definitely um, talk to Justine, you can probably add on to it. Um, but so with the College of Letters and Science, which is where I started out, they actually have some advising, which is just for freshmen, just for first years. So you can get some help at like trying to like, just trying to figure out the college. And then later on, you can still go and just get more help and more see more advisors in the College of Letters and Science. The College of Letters and Science is really big. It is, again, the three quarters of the school is College and Letters and Science. So it, you do have to go up and make a appointment, but if you don't, you do have to kind of sit through like, you know, a 15, 20, maybe 30 minute, depends on when you go, um, at like time just to go and see an advisor. And they are very helpful, um, but you, sometimes you do have to do your own work to go up and like, not your own work, but like, I will say Berkeley doesn't coddle you in a bit. You have to kind of go and you have to seek the help yourself. They will not seek you, you have to seek the help. So you have to go and look up what you would want to talk to the advisor about instead of walking in and saying, okay, I haven't done any research, help me out. Like it is kind of better to walk in knowing what you want to, what you need help with and kind of already get being along the way. And that's yeah. letters of science. But then also in, um, uh, in College of Chemistry, they have their own advising office and again, appointments and walk-ins. It does take a little, not, it could be taken a little, take, it could take a little bit to walk in and see an advisor, but they're all very helpful. Once you get in, they're all wonderful and all amazing. Um, and, but again, like I mentioned, Berkeley does not call to you in the sense that they will not come to you. Like a small, some small colleges, one of my friends goes to a really small college over in uh, Maine, or no, Maine and Vermont, I forget which one, over there, East Coast. And, um, but it's a very small college and they actually reach out to her and say, hey, like I haven't talked to you in a while, come in and like, have like an advising appointment. Berkeley won't do that. Berkeley will say, you do you, man. If you want to come and talk to us, you have to do that. But once you go in and talk to them, they're all very nice and you get your, their full attention. They'll actually reach out to you. When I was transferring colleges, um, uh, the person within College of Chemistry actually reached out to me and said, hey, you came in for the appointment and I haven't seen you in a bit. Are you doing okay? Like that's a rare occurrence, but not rare occurrence, but like, it's just very nice that they even try to find the time to do it even when it is, there's so much happening on their plate. So you have to go out to them and they can help you, academic advisors. Yes, Casey, I think you gave really great advice on coming to these appointments prepared, just knowing what you're gonna talk about and having that knowledge ahead of time is really important. Um, maybe this is also something you can talk about just in terms of navigating Campus, um, how difficult would it be to go undecided in your first year and then transfer into a more competitive college, for example, engineering or chemistry? Great question. Again, I did that. Um, but so like I mentioned before, or like I think Justine mentioned too, um, when you go into Berkeley, um, you come in as undeclared in the College of Letters and Science, Environmental Design, or Rouser College of Environmental Design, and the, no, Rouser College of Natural Resources and Environmental Design, excuse me. But for those three colleges, um, you come in as, as undeclared. So essentially it is undecided with an intending to major in other things. So with Justine, actually, she actually she can probably add on a lot more to this, but like, you know, declaring the major afterward. So you come in and you're intending to major in certain things. So she's a rising sophomore. She would be declaring her majors now. Um, so you also coming in undecided is a very easy thing to do. And that I recommend, but when transferring into um, the other colleges, Excuse me. <laughs> um, to transferring into the other colleges uh, is not impossible. Again, I was able to do it, but you do have to keep up some certain requirements and you do have to go, you have to talk to both colleges, talk to letters and science and say, hey, I would like to transfer into this college. They say, okay, here's some paperwork to fill out with us. You then go to College of Chemistry and say, hey, I'm looking to transfer into you guys. They say, okay, here's some paperwork to fill out with us. Um, but you do have to keep like your GPA has to be a little bit higher than just average. I think you have to have like a 3.0 or 2.5-ish or something more like a three more like a 3.0 to transfer into those colleges especially if it's impacted like if you come into berkeley as undeclared and you want to go into electrical engineering computer science getting into that college can be a bit harder because they have they already have too many people within that major so trying to get in 
when there's already an overflow can be a bit much. But again, it's not impossible. It just is a little bit more paperwork and it is a bit more like being on top of being on your game, going in whenever you have the chance to go and talk and fill out the paperwork and turn it all in. Not impossible, it does take, you know. Uh, and maybe just a little bit briefly, if uh, Justine, if you could touch upon campus culture and what the environment at Berkeley is like, um, just before we end the Q&A really quickly. Yeah, um, campus culture, I I don't know if there's like one way to describe it. I would definitely say we have a lot of spirit. Uh, you will always see people sporting Berkeley apparel and uh, rally committees always there, always around. Um, and there is a lot of, um, just a lot of like social justice um, presence too at Berkeley, which I personally love. Uh, if you walk on Sproul, you'll see definitely a lot of people um, uh, maybe like handing out flyers or talking about things that they are passionate about. So I would definitely just say like passion, spirit, um, and just diversity. Like not, no one's the same here. We're all very different people. Uh, like we have very different personalities. And that's one thing that I also love about going here. You'll meet people who have completely different backgrounds, but also people who have different opinions than you and you get to talk about that and it's just an ongoing conversation. Thanks so much for sharing Justine. Um, and so now for my favorite question of all, um, how has Berkeley impacted you? Can you describe for us um, your Berkeley story? Um, I can go first for this one. So like I mentioned at the very, very beginning, I have a twin sister that goes to UCLA. And ever since, like just going in, like ever since I was born with my twin sister, we were always finding out who's better, who's better, who's better, who's better. Um, I, I would get an A, she'd get an A plus. I would get a D, she'd get a D plus. Like it's just, she always was just that much better than me until we got into college and she got into UCLA and I was waitlisted at Cal, but then I actually got in off the waitlist. So I was like, ha ha, I'm coming in, I'm better. Woo, you suck. Um, but um, so that's just my Berkeley story of why I chose Berkeley, just trying to out, to out to my sister. But I came to Berkeley on Cal Day, or if you saw on Cal Week, also a lot of fun spirit. But I came on Cal Day and I saw Cal Band playing. I saw Ossie. Ossie actually picked me up, which is weird because he was like five foot four, but he picked me up with ease. And I was like, ooh, that Ossie's lifting. Um, but I came to campus and I just loved it. I also love being close to the bay. I love being and you know, close to the bay, close to the big city, but also far away from Long Beach, like far enough to where my mom has to call me before she visits. I love my mom, but like some distance, but all within the same state, all of it, love it. Um, so that's why a little bit of my Berkeley story and also Berkeley influences me and just, you know, be the best and be great and just try your hardest. Whether, I mean, whether you know, get an A or whether you get a C, if you try your hardest, you know, you're doing good. So yeah, my Berkeley story. All right. Thanks for sharing, Casey. Um, so my Berkeley story, I have a lot of family who are alumni of Berkeley. I mentioned my sister went here. My dad also went here in addition to so many other people in my family. So I felt a lot of pressure when I was applying to colleges. I was very unsure about Berkeley because I feared that I would not get in. I, I for some reason, I was just, I did not want to face rejection. And I also didn't want to disappoint my family, but I actually made a deal with my dad that if I apply to Berkeley, he's not going to tell my sister because she was a student at this time. So I applied. We didn't tell my sister. Three months go by, um, maybe more than three months. Uh, and then I got in and I told her and she did not believe me because she thought that I didn't even apply. Uh, so I went to Cal Day after that and I knew it was the obvious choice for me. Uh, the diversity, the environment that you see at Berkeley, it's just unmatched. The campus is beautiful and I really love just how great the Bay Area is in general as well. I just, I was very gravitated toward Berkeley after I finally just gave in and visited and I knew as soon as I stepped foot on campus that I was meant to go here and I'm very happy with my decision now. I love all the people that I've met and the communities that I've found through just like putting myself out there. So yeah, that, that's pretty much how it went for me. <laughs> Thank you both so much for sharing. Um, Berkeley definitely pushes people and surprises them in the types of people that they become after they leave uh, campus. Um, so with that being said, we're just going to move on 
to the end of our virtual visit for today. Um, please feel free to contact us, uh, follow us on social media at UC at visit UC Berkeley. Our, uh, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. We are updated with those accounts. Um, you can email tour at berkeley.edu if you have any additional questions and a student ambassador will actually get back to you. So then um, if you're interested in also following our stories, experiences, campus ambassadors write up various blog posts on Bear Talk blog. Um, the website link is beartalk.berkeley.edu. And then a different recorded virtual visit is available on our website if you want to see more campus ambassadors and just hear more from us. And then two other note, three other notes that I'll leave you with. Um, we are celebrating 150 years of women at Berkeley. Uh, the website is 150w.berkeley.edu. And there you can learn more about the passionate, intelligent women and their stories of our campus. Um, women have been at Berkeley since before we had the right to vote. Um, that's really, I say this every virtual visit because I think it's really important for all of our attendees to know that women are a big part of our campus history. And then we're standing together um, about, you can read our chancellor's message about how we're facing these really trying times at news.berkeley.edu. And then you can learn more about how our university is handling COVID-19 through our various resources at coronavirus.berkeley.edu. And then with that being said, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for spending this hour with us um, from back end folks answering questions from Casey and Justine, your two ambassadors, and most of all, from you, our attendees. So thank you so much. And we'll just end on a go bears, go bears. Go bears. Go bears. Go bears. Have a great day and thank you for your time. <laughs>